Welcome back to an episode. We are again somewhere in the wilderness. And we are right next to the ladder. And the ladder gets us up on this thing here. The hidden cache thingamajay. Somewhere at the top. To the easy path. Yes. And we are going to figure out what's up here. A campfire. Well, look at that. A barrel and a chest. And more barrels. Yeah, look at that. There's an awful lot of stuff around here. So let's see, there is nothing in that barrel. And of course there is something right here. Poison resistance, nice. And potion of invisibility. Turn invisible, the condition ends early if you attack or cast a spell. That's the thing, it's a potion. Not a spell, right? It's a potion. So how come a potion just, or like the, the, the effect of the potion disappears if you attack? I mean I can understand when it is magic, but a potion should be... Like the invisibility of a potion should be present even after an attack. Maybe uh, it is limited to a certain amount of turns, right? For three turns or whatever, you become invisible no matter what you do, right? But once you cast a an invisible spell, let's say, um, your invisibility is different, right? Uh, meaning that once you attack or or, uh, or cast a spell, the uh, invisibility uh, of the spell disappears, right? Um, but this one here is a permanent thing. That, that would be, that, that would kind of make more sense because how, why else should, uh, like a, like a potion just not work anymore? I mean, it's still inside your body. That makes no sense whatsoever. All right. Now, what else do we have up here? Get up there. I can't just click up here and the character seems to find his way or maybe I just clicked the wrong spot. And we got ourselves more thieves tools. Perfect. Uh, Alright. So much so for the hidden cache. I actually thought there was more, but uh, doesn't look like it. What does the campfire actually do? Can we activate it and deactivate it? Yes. We can make it burn or not so. A perception check. By the way. Who else has perception in here? Uh, actually, it's easier if I do it this way. Character stats, and I... Oh, come on, really? I thought, like, every... Uh, I thought every character thing in here would switch to that if I open that, because now I have to do this manually all over again. That makes no sense. Um, but wait a minute. There is actually approval or, or not so much. Doesn't seem to have changed the... Oh no, wait a minute. Shadowheart. We got a bit more approval from her. Not that much from... For the others though. But okay, what do we got? Uh, what did I say? Perception, yes. Perception is... Wisdom. Alright, we are not that wise. So it would be good to have a... Percep or like, wisdom character in here. Okay, so Shadowheart is our wise character. We are going to focus on like, one school of each, let's say. Um... The problem is my character right now is a very dexterous character. Maybe I should go with the sleight of hand thing. Meaning that I have to be the sneaky, uh, shadowy kind of um, character. Meaning that uh, Asterion has to be exchanged uh, with someone else, really. Sad, sad, sad. I kind of like this fella. Anyway, we're going one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there are five different um, kinds of stats. Now, there's the big question. Do you want dexterity in there or not? Right? Um, like every... Maybe not everybody, but... Uh, maybe one character should at least be a strength-focused uh, one. You definitely need some insight and medicine uh, for wisdom or so. Uh, I'm definitely an arcane kind of fellow. Maybe I can mix it, depending on my stats. Uh, because right now I'm like dex and int. Pretty high, actually. Maybe I can get this uh, even higher. Like, I don't know what the maximum is. I think it's always uh, 20 or so. Um, so we could try to max out at least uh, two stats for that. And, uh, yeah. What about Gale? Gale is supposed to be... Uh, it's another kind of intellect character. But we are already at uh, plus three on this one. Right? Yeah, everything in here is plus three, but we focused on most of that because of our background. Uh, and he's more persuasion, uh, bonus and whatnot. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah, so we definitely need a charismatic character. 
purely charismatic character, just for certain uh, traits, or maybe we can just ignore that. What does performance actually do? Does it doesn't do anything? Command the stage, persuasion. I mean, persuasion, deception, intimidation, performance, whatever. This is charismatic stuff. What if I just ignore that? What if I? Hmm, and is the big question. Should we get this or should we not get this? Because the charisma also makes the trader's prices better. But what if we only use charisma on the market, meaning that we switch our team up a little bit uh, regularly, and then we are just going for charisma characters once we go shopping. And uh, the actual combat raid happens up here with a little bit of wisdom and intelligence and dexterity and strength. And the characters are working accordingly, meaning that yeah, and the only character that would actually benefit from charisma um, would be bards, right? Spell casting for bards, paladins, and sorcerers and warlocks. Spell casting, uh, but not the other stuff. Only spell casting. So we definitely need a cleric because of the boom benefits that we get. Maybe even the druid. Um, so that means either we get a druid for the buffs or the cleric for the buffs, because of the speak with uh, animals uh, kind of spell. Um, and the whole sensing the environment kind of thing is also very helpful. But having multiple perception checks in here is just very, very neat. Okay, uh, hmm. And then what uh, else we get? Like, I am definitely a dexterity kind of guy, meaning that I need... Uh, I have stealth, but I never ever seem to use it, which is actually very iffy. Um, hmm. I don't have the stealth skills but i definitely would need them uh with a bonus critical uh for the light crossbow that would be really good especially with the strategy in here like i can go with bonus actions uh and then just use a crossbow uh to do that but i couldn't have like maybe i can get two bonus actions that would be sweet or maybe even something that does not take up any actions or so that would be even better hmm. all right uh, yeah, because I want to focus on, like, one character strength, uh, one character dexterity, one character intellect, and one character wisdom. So we got dexterity. Ah, this is so high. Ah, because of the items, right? Um, okay. A key is actually really good at uh, dexterity. Mm, if I were to only focus on intellect, though could have gotten with instead of stealth I could have gone for nature maybe um, then I could have focused purely on intellect things and it would have been uh, a buffer for all of it what's this rocky crevice at the back of the crevice lies a bag enfolded in the chitinous squabbling of spiders a shiny gold coin pokes from its mouth Hmm. Well, I could use nature thing. Survey the spiders. Alright, let's get a bonus here. See how we can roll. And we failed. Oh, we didn't. Hey. The creatures clutch the pack possessively. You have no doubt. A spider egg is nestled within. Hmm, animal handling. Speak softly so the spiders in hopes of calming them. Slide of hand. Dart your hand in, hoping to snatch the back. Well, we could try that. Uh, 15. Okay, that's not going to work. Uh, yeah, our slide of hand definitely fails. What now? Do we get poisoned? Oh, use inspiration. Uh, I could roll again. Maybe that works. Um, but do I want to do that now? Nah, Pinces what if we continue? Your flesh and, up your arm and, across your back. and we take damage. Great. So, who else would that be? Asterion. Uh, we could try this dude. Alright. We could definitely go with the rogue slider hand thing. Pokes from its mouth. Let's see. If, yeah, 19. Sometimes I don't really know how the whole guidance thing actually works. Like, double that amount. Great. The spiders scatter, and you stash the bag. Something clinks among the coins. And we got it. Uh, item received. A pouch. 
What's inside? We got some gold and a spider egg sack. Something or some things wriggle within the sticky shell. Uh, okay, I think I can actually throw this uh, and then like spiders come out uh, and then stuff happens. But let's just keep the pouch here because pouches have the nice ability of being very lightweight and we can uh, use them to manage our items properly, which is pretty sweet. What I want is a button to automatically sort things. That would be sweet too. Okay. Didn't want to. Where's the. Oh, there's a skeleton. How delicious. Delicious. Careful, yes, yes, yes. I buy it. Mm hmm. Oh, silver pendant. Guidance. Even more. Grime covers this necklace, but you can vaguely discern delicate engravings of moon and harp. Right. Uh, concentration. 10 turns. The target gains a plus one. Blah, blah, blah. Bonus to ability checks. Right. A cantrip. And it's a cantrip that I don't even need to learn because it's permanently. The necklace matches the sigil in that cave. The harpers were busy. A sigil in that cave. What kind of cave are you talking about? A moon and harp. Wait a minute. Moon and harp. Oh, that's cave. Uh huh. So that's progress. So Swift could it be that the me. yeah, that, uh, that it has some kind of different uh, benefit or whatnot? Very interesting. Okay, so sometimes you don't even see skeletons roam around, which is a bit of a. But yeah, um, what does our neck actually say? There's a little bit of neck stuff. Oh, what is this? Amulet. Mm, speak with the dead. Um, could I? Yeah, why not? Um, let's get this one here. Uh, let's see if I can get the same cantrip on myself twice. That would be sweet. So I just uh, cantripify myself like that. Then I go to Ha and do the same cantrip uh, on me as well. Okay, so you can only get one cantrip. Very interesting. Um, ah, so I can cantripify two of them. And again, ability checks. But ability checks are just tests whether an action is successful based on a dice roll. Your ability modifier, any bonuses, and the checks difficulty class. So, a bonus on penalty based on an ability. And ability, your physical and mental attributes, they affect most of your rolls. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Um, that's just one teensy, teensy, teensy question. Uh, why does she only have... That is kind of weird. Uh, nah, it wasn't age. Um, ah, no, she opens, uh, the shield again. That's good. Okay. Hmm. Can't go there. Why? Why? Why can't we go there? I must keep going. Okay, so we have to jump manually then. Okay, guidance is gone, and everybody's jumping, 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 jumping. So, uh, what is part of the abilities? Let's see, ability, 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 checks. Hmm. So, um, ability checks are just these ones, I presume. Or are ability checks also part of the, um, of combat, right? I don't know how or if ability checks work in combat or not. I mean, this improves dexterity and all of this stuff, right? So the base ability, the stat, um, yeah, attribute, no, it's not attribute, it's ability. Uh, this thing here, saving throw bonuses, right? Oh, the thing is, I, uh, I don't really see that. Okay, uh, so let's see, minus one. Okay, and if I do that one on myself, how does it change? Still minus one, three, and whatnot. Uh, saving throws, they are ability checks ish, right? Mm hmm. I actually thought that the 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 bonus is somewhere displayed in there. Da -da -da, two ability checks. Yes. Something is weird about that. Uh, test whether an action is successful based on dice roll. Yes. 
the ability uh, any bonuses and the checks difficulty sure da, 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 da. it's a checks difficulty but does that so that's the ability da, 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 strength hmm hmm does guidance work in combat hmm that is a question that I have right now. I don't know. Very interesting indeed. Oh, wait a minute. Um, I need to check something. Ah, all of this stuff in the west. Uh, and this exploration thingy, the cave. Oh, yes. Is it that I wanted to explore the cave before or afterwards? Hmm. I mean, I do want to get rid of items, right? Because I am... Um, yeah, let, let, let's try to get rid of items. We have to go into the camp here. Yeah? There. Okay, that was weird. There you go. Okay, that was strange. The Emerald Grove. Ah, there they are. There are children here, you fool! We was running for our lives. You led them straight to us, and you let them take the druid too? Unbelievable! Hmm, interesting. Um, well, there's one goblin. That's ten. I'm leaving before the horde shows up. Hmm. Oh, we can also attack them. Very interesting. Uh, one fire just ended. Now you're picking another. Relax. Do it. These goblins didn't take any prisoners. Hmm. We lost him back at the ruins. Old place is crawling with gobbles. He trusted you. Nobody forced him to go with us. He insisted. And when things got tough, he couldn't keep up. Simple as that. My God, you're a coward. The human's eye twitches. He's about to blow. Interesting. I could melee attack him. Intimidation. Again, a charisma thing. Nothing in here screams intellect. Uh, it's actually kind of interesting. I... Yeah, I actually have to say that uh, there's another game that made this interactions a little bit better. Um, or like checks a little bit better. And it was uh, Vampire the Masquerade. Uh, you had also different ways of interacting with people, also persuasion-ish kind of thing. Um, but then you also had some innate um, abilities that you could use as well. Uh, like some kind of uh, mental thing of the um, uh, Malkavians, for example. Uh, they saw everything differently and they had some kind of craziness in them. Um, that was an option, right? It, it was not really about charisma, it was about the character themselves and how they interacted with the world, right? So there was a little bit of crazy interaction. Uh, then there was also like a brutish interaction, like this one here. Um, and then um, like violent interaction. But then there's also um, like an intellect action, uh, which is more persuasive. Um, yeah, more... Well, yeah. Uh, and then there was also a romance kind of thing. Uh, I would say that charisma is more romantic kind of thing. You try to get in tune with the other character and you're not trying to force your intellect on them. And it's like different things. Either physical force, intellectual force, um, like charisma, um, or what else you got. Or some kind of crazy thing, right? So, I would say that there definitely needs to be different uh, dialogue options for this. So that charisma does not seem to be the be-all, end-all uh, option for playthroughs here. Because it seems to be very stunted. You have to play either very violently or very persuasive. Which is uh, crazy, given that. Uh, which means you always have to be charismatic in order to get the decent options. Or we could... Actually, no, wait a minute. We don't need to do that. Um, we could just use some, uh, some, some rolls here, some, some, some other thing here. So let's see. I'm definitely not going to attack anyone here. Uh, take a swing at the tiefling, aim the blow at the human. Or we could, um, grab both hats together and slam them onto another and, uh, attack both of them at the same time. That would be a very interesting solution. 
Hmm. If you want me to tank both of you down, I will. Otherwise, knock it off. Uh, okay, we don't seem to have uh, very good intimidation tracks. Uh, I mean, I could select another character so that I can see my stats here. Let's see. More violence won't bring back those you lost. Stop and think. Well, that is definitely good. Uh, we could also stand back and watch and see what happens. Um... Okay, we definitely don't want to intimidate them like that. Maybe persuasion could help. And of course, it's a difficulty 15. And of course, it's definitely not going to work. Uh, hmm. More violent. That let, let's just try this out. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. And that's a, that's the thing about the whole randomness kind of thing, right? Um, it just increases the chance of it working. Meaning that if you are a very, 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 very lucky person, um. You can basically play through this game with the shittiest kind of stats ever, right? Meaning that it kind of questions the whole uh, how much charisma do you need thing. It's just dependent on luck. Well, actually, you could try to improve your luck with bonuses, right? Meaning you can get bonuses from equipment um, in order to bypass uh, the difficulty checks in here. That's actually something very interesting. You can bypass it with a boost of items. You can bypass it with uh, maybe potion effects that you can use. Or you can bypass it with effects of uh, spells that you can use in order to boost that um, ability or oh, stat as well. I want to call it stats. Just everything is a stat here, by the way. But why can't it just be an attribute? Uh, everything in here is makes that. Ah. Uh, it's always attributes, never abilities. It's just oh. You're right. There's too much at stake. Worried about your precious eyes, the both of you. Enough. Squabbling is pointless. The goblins have found us. At least we agree on that. Right. Okay. The so. Could be on their way. Knew what to say. I won't worry about this parasite than a few goblins. Well, we definitely do need a healer. Oh no, what's up here? Why can't I move the camera up there properly? That's Cannon. Cannon and his fodder. What is this, by the way? Where does it lead us to? Oh, oh. That boulder is suspicious. And the deer is also suspicious. Everybody in here is suspicious. Uh, let's just talk to these fellows. Elegis, uh, Kaldari, and Rikdar. And we can do something with a gate winch. I don't know why. I call it winch. It's a winch. It's a winch Esther. <laughs> why does this keep happening? Um. I was joking about Octa's suit just a moment ago. Come on, Rika. Now what? We dig a hole and be done with him? We. We could say a prayer. We should have time for that. Yeah. Yeah. Be good. Okay, I could try to um, wait a minute. Uh, does the illusion casting actually backfire if uh, cast an illusion as a bonus? Uh, you can remain hidden while I can. Uh, but if we uh, if we were to use this, uh, would it be considered uh, a, a, a an offensive action um, if it if it stops working uh, or not? Right. I mean, um, hmm, that's the question. How uh, is an illusion be considered with our characters? So let's just talk to those two, though. Not now, please. Hmm. Of course. Have some respect. This really isn't the time to talk. Mm hmm. Right. So, yeah, it's a time to steal. <laughs> Glad you made it inside. That will be safe here for long, though. There'll be more coming. Goblins hunting packs. Mm -hmm. uh, you could hold off a horde of goblins from this position, though. Want to take a chance on the road? Uh, you're scared of if you put that. Well, you could definitely hold them off from up here. Maybe, but we're not fighters. If they broke through, it'd be a massacre. The sooner we leave for Baldur's Gate, the better. 
Mm hmm. How far are we from the city? If the road was clear, a uh, ten days walk, maybe? But while the goblins are out there, it might as well be the other side of the world. Mm hmm. So we need to figure out where the monster's coming from. Why does this keep uh, and we need to sort things out real quickly. What about ago. that? Come on, so okay. We dig a hole. Let me just, um. Let, let me just try something. Um. Oh, so it goes into pocketing mode. Yeah. Uh, and then there's a turn-based yeah. mode, shift and space. All right. What do we got? Oh. No, we're definitely not gonna do that. Step quick. Right. Uh, those two are definitely looking not at the right location. How could I... Oh, I know. I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, let's see. I need this kind of character. Uh, let's try this over here. Of course, they... I don't know what happened. Uh, and we're going for that. Sneaky axe. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. What's going on? I can't I do that? Why can't I do that? Safe. What the? I don't know uh, what happened. Definitely take this. For now. Let's get going. Ah. Uh. The cat disappeared. Just that word. I did not expect that, to be honest. Okay, let's try this again. And bam. So he is now in turn based mode. Uh, well, let's hello. see. Let's see the yeah, now it works. You're perfect. Uh, let's get this dude. Everybody else is standing still. This is amazing. Armor class unnecessary. I mean, the, it, the gold is good. I mean. I feel so bad right now. Okay. Quietly. No time to rest. So, question: What's going? Uh, why are you sneaking around? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. Are they? Do they notice? Let's see. On my way. I mean, he doesn't have any 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 armor on right now. Okay, so before you leave the sneak mode, um, what you have to do is um, get out of sneak mode. Oh. Okay, good. Everything is fine. Perfect. Whew. Oh, look at this. I call it the hero's tax, by the way. The reason uh, why it uh, it is okay to, to get the items. <laughs> um, right. There's nothing here. What about what about this? We got a crate. Vacant as an orc skull. Yes. Poor orcs though. Always have to hold it. Ah, nice. Hey, there's a flute. Uh, why is it that we? You gotta be kidding me! Come on, get the bloody apple. And in the pocket it goes, yes. Oh, there's bedrolls in here as well. Look at that. Multiples. So, the big question is, what are those bedrolls doing? And, uh, what else? Oh, Cannon's belongings. Oh. Hmm. Who's Cannon? Uh, what is this? That looks weird. Really weird. Alright, so I want to know what these items are. Wait a minute, that was the wrong one. Uh, bedroll, what's good this? It's a uh, thick feather. Uh, it takes... I uh, can drop it, but that's not really helpful. 
Oh, musical instrument. We could try that. Uh, we could try to equip it. Oh, -ho. oh. Okay, so how do we use it? Ah, perform an action. Bard dance. Pool performance. Uh huh. Play tune to attract and delight those around you. Yeah, if you have, <laughs> you need a bard and someone with uh, sneaky uh, things in order to. It's kind of like using the um, um, uh, it's kind of like uh, using the bard as an illusion, but instead of being an illusion, it is just a, a permanent thing, right? Uh, that distracts the people. Really, really, really interesting one. Hmm. But I have to say those, uh, decorated... Whatever this is. Oh. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. That's interesting. Why does no one notice that? It's a green leaf thing. Emerald Grove. Maybe this is what it is. It is uh, what it is, of course. Now... Let's just go and check out the uh, eastern side up here. Oh, look at that. Oh, that looks nice. And there is timber. Okay, let's let timber be timber. So, let's see. Those are still going around. I have to find a... Uh, not a magician. Uh, a money magician. A merchant. <laughs> Really quickly. So, what else we got up here? A butterfly egg. Um, your enemies are surprised and can take actions. What happened? Uh, bugbear assassin. Ooh. Hoi. Who is this? And why is he up here? That's weird. How come he manages to get here? Okay, um... We are... What character are we right now? We could try to distract them a little bit. Um... Distract them like that. Everything is good. Um, and now we are going to... Go into sneak mode again. Try that. And of course it's... Why do we have to go that close to it? Not enough movement. What do you mean, not enough movement? Okay. Uh, let's get as close as we can towards it. Maybe with a little bit of luck we can uh, shoot at it. We're still sneaking very... There we go. 11 damage. Perfect. Next one. Can't really... Oh, you gotta be kidding me. No, that's not what we want. Uh, 30 ish kind of damage. Well, at least something. Do we have that? anything else though? No. Gale. Uh, six of those. Okay, we do need a bit more damage than that. That one has no movement speed, and this one seems to be melee. Uh, could we get closer to it? Let's just do this. Oh, we got a level up. How convenient. How convenient. And we got a bugbear assassin. Let's just uh, move on forward. Adira, you will be uh, very, very, very happy that everything worked out the way it did, I think. So, we got ourselves a morning star. Right. Martial weapons, morning stars. Tenacity. When you miss an attack, you deal one bludgeoning damage anyway. Oh, that's sweet. Okay, what character could benefit from this weapon the most? Um, I mean, this one here is also very interesting. Death's Promise. When you, the spear misses its target, the wielder's next attack roll against this target gains true strike. This thing means that you have to attack twice, right? Um, like twice the same target. I do not intend to attack the same target multiple times with the same character. I uh, intend to attack the target with multiple characters in order to kill it immediately so that it does not get a second chance to live. That's the idea behind it. Um, 
let's see. This bludgeoning thingy right here could actually save myself some 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 headache over there. And it also kind of makes sense uh, with her. She doesn't need a spear anyway. Mm, it's kind of cool though. Also kind of nice bonus that we get. Um, main hand only tenacity. Is this a passive or what is this? Oh, this thing is huge. Um, hmm. Then that's not it. A heart stopper. Okay. Possibly inflicts chest trauma. Target loses in action. Uh huh. Undead and constructs can't get chest trauma. And then there's a concussive smash. And only works after a short rest. What about this one? Attack roll, short rest also. That's very interesting that we need a short rest in order to swing that hard. Very interesting. Kind of limits things a lot. Um. But, uh, what about this passive that this one gets? Tenacity, main hand only. Uh, where is this thing? Passive feature. Ah, when you miss it, it just happens, right? And the miss thing also makes stuff a little easier if she is getting there. But there's no strength. Nah, no, no, no. She's not a strength character, is she? Um, actually... She's like a strength and dex mix, which is weird. She's more like a wisdom character than anything. Ah, very weird. Okay, but what I have to really figure out is if uh, Guidance makes your attacks hit more often. Like this thing right here. It's a concentration spell, sure. Hmm. Okay, make a target uh, more resistant to spell effects and conditions. It receives a da, 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 bonus to saving throws. It says more resistant. Does that also mean that we take half the damage? A saving throw. What, what does the saving throw mean? Determines whether a target resists a spell or condition. Oh, it really says the word resist. And resist. The condition thing is like weird because uh, it probably gets rid of it. But if we resist a spell, does that mean that the spell gets nullified? Um, how does that work? Because the... I, I, I need the glossary. Where's the where's the help for that? Uh, where could we get that help from? That's like a quest log. That's like this. I thought I've seen something uh, in here that helps me uh, learn more about that game. But I just do not know where it was. Like some kind of glossary uh, button or whatever. Yeah, there's the tenacity thing. Reaction. Okay. There. And you missed it. It uh, just happens. Opportunity attack and a miss thing. That's pretty sweet. Uh, it's the ping. It's the center camera thing. The journal. That was the map. Down up. Tutorials. There we go. That's the thing that I wanted to check. Uh, there's like the short rest thing, uh, initiate short rest and open rest menu. Some classes will also recover resources, yes, like the most annoying ones. Proficiency, weapons and armor. There we go, if you're proficient with weapon, you can add your proficiency modifier to attack rolls and uh, can use its weapon actions. If you use armor or shield, you, can't, you aren't proficient with. You can still gain the additional armor class, but you will have disadvantage on strength and dexterity checks. And won't be able to cast spells. And won't be, okay? So you may be able to cast spells if you are proficient with an armor. But that's kind of weird. Mm, inspiration. There we go. No, this is not it. Um, and there's also the inspiration menu right here. It's like J, P, and uh, M. M, J, P. Yeah, all of those buttons are very far apart, actually. Learning spells, spell casting, sneak attack. We got that one pretty much on the go. Uh, you cannot sneak attack if you have disadvantage. Uh, um, Rogue either has advantage on the attack or an ally within melee distance of an enemy. Rogue can make a stealth check as a bonus action to try and gain advantage on... Oh! An attack roll. A stealth check? How does that work? They can. Uh -huh. Oh, to gain the advantage because of the hiding bonus. Hidden attack advantage. Attacking enemies while hiding gives advantage all the time on the attack, which can be essential for rogue sneak attacks. You don't need to be behind the target, just hidden from their view. Meaning that a uh, blinding spell or anything else would be pretty sweet. Uh, 
shared initiative. Yeah, we got that one too. Surprised. When attacked from... We'll be surprised when attacked from stealth. Surprised characters cannot move or take action or reactions in the first round. Oh, nice. High ground rules. Oh. Taking on the high ground benefits ranged characters. Um... Ba -ba -ba -ba. Above gain a bonus to a roll, whereas ranged attacks from below get a penalty in the combat log. Offhand attacks, there you go. While dual wielding melee weapons, you will automatically use your bonus action to make an additional attack with the second weapon. You can toggle this automatic use at any time on the hotbar or with a keyboard shortcut if the weapon has like a bonus effect on it. So you still want to hold it yes but you don't want to use it that's the interesting thing uh you can examine creatures yes 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 with a t key enemies sidelines here we got that one um f shifter that that's the button that we need to press if you are trying to be stealthy these areas are worth avoiding yes uh then there's the locked thing that we got um the highlight items with the left alt right mouse button for toughness oh what's this uh, some objects in the world are unusually tough and need to be hit with enough damage at once to actually be affected. You can always... Uh, enough damage at once. Does that mean at the same turn or does it mean with the same instance of appearance? Meaning that if we were to turn it into turn-based mode and attack all at the same time, does it get added together and be counted as one single attack or is it still multiple different attacks? That's a question. And then there's a jump key, of course. Surfaces can be created by spells. Da, 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 da. Don't step into it if you don't like it. There we go. Torches. Obscured areas are hard to explore. Uh, you need, like, dark vision. No. In fighting in the dark will give your characters disadvantage unless you have dark vision. Oh. Light a torch or cast spells generating a light to make areas easier to navigate. Ah. Uh ah. -huh. But it also makes enemies um, get the advantage Meaning that if we are in the darkness, if we can create darkness, but we are uh, a dark vision character, then we can get an innate advantage on them all the time. We just have to get rid of spells like that. And of course the battlefield looks a little bit weird afterwards, which is always annoying. Okay, turn-based mode, we got that one. Uh, disarming traps works the same. Crime, there we go. You can pickpocket an items from characters while hiding, uh, while next to, uh, but hidden from a character. You can use the context menu to pickpocket, uh, or just click on them uh, and then select which items you want to steal you will have the to succeed as a lot of hand check to successfully steal the items more valuable items will make the check more difficult failing the check will mean you are noticed and branded a criminal okay and i thought this was happening right now but no it was just an enemy remember your actions most definitely have consequences taking items highlighted red will count as a crime as will acts of violence if you're causing trouble. Characters may call their associated guards on you, leading to fines, jail time, or possibly worse, death. Item context menu, what is this? Uh, we got that one. Tap, open the party menu, we got that. Encumbered, there you go. Light encumbered characters will have a reduced movement speed um, and half jump distance. And heavily encumbered characters move much more slowly and cannot jump at all or climb. So, and they have a disadvantage on ability checks, attack rolls as well, as well as strength, uh, dexterity, and constitution saving throws. Drop items or change your equipment to become uh, unencumbered. Oh, change your equipment. I'm, I think now I know what this means. It's the equipment that you actually have on the character at that moment, right? Um, like the, the, the weapon that we carry. If the character carries a weapon, uh, like the melee weapon, then uh, it, it, this one gets subtracted. But if we switch to another loadout uh, of another weapon, maybe um, this works. But somehow encumbrance uh, doesn't seem to get. So it doesn't seem to work the way uh, I want it to. Anyway, uh, followers, so followers will join your party. Yada yada yada. Um, what, what does it say about that? Uh, followers cannot pick up items or interact in dialogues for you. Yeah, that's great. Why else should I get followers? Like, ugh. That's basically one singular reason to uh, play always with like charisma, because it gives you so much more options, and it makes things easier, and it doesn't feel like safe scamming all the time. <laughs> uh, some characters which on your party, yeah, uh, selecting uh, this follower allows you to take direct control of its movement and actions. Uh, they cannot pick up items or interact in dialogues for you. Hmm. 
Followers cannot pick up items. They can pick up items. Uh, huh. Will join your party as temporary and nice. They will. Oh! Followers of. Fo uh, that's what it means. Okay, so party members can definitely do that. But how do I make that work? Companions. Some allies will stick by your side through thick and thin. Companions can join you on your adventure as part of your party or wait in the camp. Until you call upon them. All companions gain experience at the same time, regardless of if they fought by your side or stayed in the camp. When companions are in your active party, you can control their movement speed, uh, movements and actions as if they were an avatar. Remember, these are thinking and feeling people uh, uh, with their own ambitions uh, and opinions. If uh, their attitude towards you drops slow enough, they will leave. But if it's high enough, you may form a close bond with them. Meaning that, um... Does the attitude count towards only me as the avatar? Or does it count towards all of the other party members as well, right? So that you have two characters that hate each other to the core, um, and then they both leave, right? Because you always try to uh, force them in one party. That would be pretty interesting to see. Actually annoying, right? If you have a stealth and a very righteous character. <laughs> The party is shown in the left side up as a character portrait showing them their health and any status is affecting them and if they are ready to level up. Grouped party members will move together in, uh, in the world if they aren't hiding and you can ungroup party members by dragging uh, link portraits apart and so on. It's of course shown by the chain. Um, characters who are far apart in the world cannot be grouped together and then you can just flip for them. So if you want to make room in your party for new allies, you can ask a companion to wait at the camp at any time by speaking to them. And hopefully this is not considered to be an affront, uh, like some negative thing. Camera control, yada yada yada. So the tutorials give you a very nice overview. The whole multi-classing kind of thing, definitely not recommended for like beginners, but uh, we just try to figure it out as we go. Um, minor magical effects can be achieved with cantrips, uh, sure. Most classes restore their spell uh, slots on a long rest, yes, but you need to have an awful lot of spells. These vary in power, for example, you need a first level spell slot to cast a less, and so on and so forth, yeah. You do need a bag, a spell bag, a spell slot, so to speak, in order to hold a spell of that kind of power. Makes sense. Um, the only problem is the amount of spell slots that you can hold. Multiclassing, and we got this one, learning spells. Wizards can learn some spells from scrolls they find in the world, and using the scrolls context menu, da 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 da, copying these spells into a wizard spellbook requires expensive materials presented by a gold cost. Aha! A wizard cannot learn a spell that is a higher level than the highest level spell they can cast. Aha! Uh -huh. Interesting. They can cast. Could cast, I hope, and not can cast, because that would mean that as long as we do not have learned a high enough level spell, times. then uh, we may not be able to learn that spell, even if we were to uh, equip it, let's say. But okay, let's hope this is just finicky thing, and we're going to uh, talk to uh, Nadira in a moment. <laughs>